Happy New Year, everybody. Today, I'm gonna to be setting up this gorgeous Archer and Olive A5 bullet journal with my health and fitness bullet journal. Now, I have a little story to tell you about it, but let me show you my tools first. So I have this EC mechanical pencil because I like to draw things out first. I have my favorite Pilot brush pen. And then I have some markers here that are super tips from Crayola, as well as my favorite Tombows and one of the Zig clean color dot markers in mostly gray and pink and one little teal or blue one. Then I also have my favorite fine liner, which is this uni pin 0.5 fine liner. I think I got this from jet pins and I will leave as many links down below as I can for anybody who's interested in seeing or buying some of these tools. My other like more gel pen that I use is this pilot precise V5 RT refill inside a Kiki K metallic pen body. It's like my favorite pen of all time is that Pilot Precise V5. And so I put those refills in as many pens as they will fit. I also have a little bowl to the side here of washi tapes, mostly from Simply Gilded or Michaels. Some Tombow Mono Correction Tape because when I'm doing bullet journal, I inevitably make mistakes. Some removable adhesive. I also have this set of scissors with a little cap on it, which makes me feel better with my kids running around. And then to the side, I have one of my old look term bullet journals that I didn't use the back pages. So I figured I could use that maybe for setting up some extra spreads or like sketching out ideas. I also spent a lot of time on Pinterest looking at other people's spreads and pre setting up a lot of this with my pencil. Uh, just so I didn't mess up too much. I do replace that little B paper that I put on there, but um, you'll start to see me set this up. But I do kind of have a story about this bullet journal in general. Um, on this first page, I'm putting one of my favorite Oprah Winfrey quotes, which is understand the truth of who you are and then get about the business of living it. That is from one of her talks on her Super Soul Sunday uh, podcast, and I love it. But I originally set up this bullet journal for health and fitness back in October of 2020. And then life sort of got away from me in October and November and then with the holidays. So I've decided to reboot everything with my focus on health and fitness here in 2021. This first page is really all about the way that I want to feel in my body because uh, just a little bit of backstory on me if you're new to my channel or if you've been around and just didn't know this i have polycystic ovarian syndrome which affects a lot of women uh, on a scale i would say and i have had in the past a pretty severe case of it and have really struggled with some terrible symptoms that affect my day-to-day -day life for you know years and years decades of my life but the best i ever felt was when i was eating a way of eating called bright line eating and I'll talk a little bit more later about what that is. But I stuck with it for a couple of years because the reason I really went on to it in the first place was we were trying to have our second child. And after going through years of infertility treatments to have our son, I had just decided it was not going to go through infertility treatments again. And so after a year and a half of trying to conceive, we finally said, okay, we're just gonna do everything we can to try to get my health and my symptoms under control and see if that helps. So I discovered Brightline Eating from a friend and thought, okay, I'm gonna try this. And it is a more structured way of eating, I guess is a good way to put it. You cut out all sugar and all flour. So that's all forms of sweetener, all forms of honey or monk fruit juice. There's like literally no sugar other than natural sugar like fruit and no types of flour. So no almond flour or anything like that. It's not about being gluten-free. It's about just not eating flour. And if you're interested, I will link Susan Pierce Thompson's book and website on Brightline Eating. I am not in any way ever saying that I think other people should eat this way uh, because, you know, it's not the right diet for everybody and no way of eating is right for everyone. But this is just what has worked for me with PCOS. And back in the day when I started it, uh, I think it was, gosh, October of 2017, I finally lost weight that I had been holding on to for years and years. So I dropped about 60 pounds and then a year later got pregnant naturally. 
So I felt good. I had so much more energy. I was sleeping better. And so on this page, I'm kind of listing out the habits, by the way, of the things I want to do, like drinking water, no more sugar, walking 10,000 steps a day. And then on this page, I'm setting up my core desired feelings, which comes from Daniel Laporte's desire map, which I can also link for you down below. But basically, I felt so good eating this way. But then I was able to get pregnant. I had a very healthy pregnancy and delivery, thank God. But after my child was born, she's just the sweetest little baby ever. And you might hear her in the background here. I really fell off the wagon with my dieting because I think I just fell into stress and needing the convenience of, of you know, just prepackaged foods and things that were easy to order from like Uber Eats and, you know, the pandemic hit. And there's no real good excuse except that, you know, sometimes we just aren't perfect people. And um, I just gained pretty much all of the weight back that I had lost originally when I started Brightline. And it's not just about the weight because, you know, you can feel good and be overweight or be a certain weight. But for me, it's about the PCOS symptoms really returning in full force and having a lot of flare ups and not feeling well. So I am dedicated to get back to it, but I tried to start in October. So this is what you're seeing is this setup. And then uh, I didn't follow through with it. So you'll see me kind of redate some things here in a few minutes. This page is all about my weight loss game board. So these are basically blocks that are three, uh, three blocks over and two blocks high. And then I just went up and down the page. And at the time when I had tried to start this in October, I was weighing in at 202 with a goal of 145. I'm using this pilot brush pen to add some drop shadows. And then I've got the intention that I was gonna fill out each one of those blocks in a color every time I lost that amount of weight. And then those little clouds that you saw are gonna be filled in with rewards that I get when I hit that particular weight milestone. You'll see when I go back to reset it here in January, I have actually gone up instead of down <laughs> to 209 pounds, but that's okay. We start where we are. It was a really rough quarter in Q4 and I was super busy, uh, plus the holidays and all of that. So I'm you'll see me kind of redate and restart some of these things, um, but I'm still using these spreads. On this spread, I've got my measurements on one side and then down here on the bottom, I'm gonna be keeping a like a graph, a chart of my weekly weight loss. And again, I will have to redate this later. And then I just used this little quote, progress, not perfection with some washi tape and a little dancing girl from Very Cute Designs. I used a lot of uh, inspiration from Pinterest for these spreads, so I will link to any of the ones I can find down below. This next spread is all about bright line eating. So like I said, there are two of the bright lines are no sugar and no flour, but you also have a third bright line of no snacking. So you only eat three meals a day. And then the fourth one is to weigh your food. And this is, like I said, not a judgment or me in any way saying, this is how I think you should eat. This is just how I eat. And um, I always have to go back to the bright line eating workbook to reference like how much can I have so if I'm eating chicken like how many ounces is it and until I get back like once I was on it for two years I memorized the stuff and didn't need to reference it but since I was coming back to it after a year I decided to write out these portions and ideas for different foods here in my bullet journal so that I could reference it pretty easily. So I have a list of the proteins, the grains, the fruits, the veggies, and the fats that are um, things that I enjoy that I are also included in the diet and the way of eating. But if you were doing keto or paleo, or you were just following your own diet, maybe you could still use ideas from these spreads for yourself. I also included here some of my favorite meal ideas. Now in our household, we do not like have a lot of variety. When I've been on Brightline in the past, we pretty much are like, okay, this is the three things we eat for breakfast every day. And a lot of times I will actually just eat the same thing every day for breakfast, but I am not a person who uh, needs a ton of routine. So for Mondays at dinner, we have the same thing almost every Monday and the same thing every Tuesday. And that works for me, but I know that does not work for a lot of people. Um, but 
it makes things a lot easier, especially when you're super busy. So here I was just writing out some quick meal ideas that I knew we would use or reference many times in the future. So here you can see I'm adding a different paper to the front instead of that B one because I liked this one better. And then you can tell from the coffee here, this is another day. It took me several days to set up this bullet, bullet journal. So here I'm taking an Instax photo and filling out that uh, like photograph gallery that I had wanted to do and track kind of six months of weight loss in this photo gallery. I already labeled them though with these stickers that were hard to pull off. So you'll see me go back later and add in some photos from October, November, and December, even though I did not actually lose any weight during that time um, and actually gained a few pounds, but I still think I look fabulous. I just wish I was feeling fabulous. <laughs> um, you'll see here, I'm going through some of my favorite Pinterest pins and kind of deciding which ones I wanted to use. So here what I'm setting up is a workout tracker. So this is a six month workout tracker where I basically did the months across the top. So there's six columns. And then I put lines down for each of the 31 days. And then you'll see that I kind of fill in with a darker gray color for the dates that don't the months that don't have 31 days. Again, this is something else I had to kind of redate later and fix because I'm trying to create uh, or use this stuff that I had set up back in October, um, even though I'm restarting here in January. I also put a quote here on the opposite page that says it doesn't get easier, you get stronger. And here you could see I used Pinterest a lot and just looked up like quotes for fitness or quotes for working out inspiration, things like that. And I really liked this one. Um, because it really is about getting stronger and just feeling better. So again, I have to use that pencil to sketch things out ahead of time or else inevitably I will end up with an R that doesn't fit or something like that. So this is why bullet journaling kind of takes me longer <laughs> and why you'll see once I do this massive setup, I really am making sure that each month is easy to set up. So I'm also tipping in this little piece of acetate with some uh, clear tape. So I'm basically just taking the acetate and uh, taping it in on the front and back sides so that it is a little bit of an additional uh, bling to my bullet journal. I skipped a page there and I'm going to go back to it to do my morning and evening routine. But this was me basically setting up uh, October for myself. So I used this quote, create the life you always wanted. And then I just put in a simple sketch of the month of October, just a little calendar there. And you'll see me kind of, I, actually I might delete it out, but I want to use these pages of the monthly kind of overview to have a quote that inspires me as well as just a month at a glance, along with maybe a photo of my family or my progress on my weight loss and my fitness. But then now I've gone back to my morning and evening routines. This is another idea that I got off of Pinterest. But I feel like one of the best ways to support myself when it comes to sticking to a diet or sticking to a way of eating is to really set up routines and habits that work well for me and that I can really stick to. And the more regimented I am with it, the less likely I am to fall off the wagon. If I just like wake up whenever and sleep in some days, I tend to feel worse and I tend to not stick to things. So uh, I used to never be a routine person. I was always like a procrastinator and hated routines. And I guess maybe I should say in my older age, I have really come to love my routines. So you can see I set up my morning and evening routine here with some fun stickers to help sort of punctuate what I was doing during those times. And this is a page that I reference a lot. And this is basically just a flip through of everything that I had up to that point. So you've got the quote page here. You've got the spread of how I really want to feel and why I'm doing all of this work, all of the main habits that I want to cultivate, my core desired feelings, my weight loss game board. Oh, and this uh, photo gallery, my weight loss game board that I wanted to fill out this measurements and sort of weight graph chart to fill out my bright line meal ideas and guidelines, as well as my workout guidelines with the quote and the little piece of acetate here. 
And then I also have my October setup or my morning and evening routine like you just saw me do. And then my October setup here where I did add some things to it as I started to go through. So you can see, and I'll kind of explain this a little bit more as I set up my January setup, but that and the meal plans each week was my goal for setting up this planner. So this is how I wanted it to look to have everything set up just so and looking good and useful, but nothing too uh, hard to keep up with. But as you can tell, I wasn't able to fully keep up with it throughout the months of October and November. So I decided to come back to it in January with fresh eyes. Okay, so now that the hectic time of the holidays and everything else is over, I decided to revisit. And even though I had used some of these pages, I decided to just totally start over and reuse some of the things and redate them. I first took my Polaroid zinc printer and went ahead and printed out some sort of selfie photos from October, November, and December that I just thought, okay, this will at least show that I'm happy and healthy and this weight loss is just going to make me feel even better. Then I took this weight loss spread, sorry about the focus changing there so much, but I took that weight loss game board and like I said, you can see I had started filling it out. I had lost a little bit of weight, but then I gained it back over that time. So what I did was add in at the top here that 209.8, which is my starting point at this point. And when I went to restart, I had already lost another four pounds or so. So I got to fill in some of those squares, but hopefully by the end, I won't have to like redo this whole thing. I'll actually get to use that original game board and I'm going to stick to it this time. When it comes to this measurement spread, I just had to white out all the dates and change them so that I could start on December 28th, which is when I st restarted. Uh, I also just quickly added an idea to my meal ideas. And then when it comes to the workouts, I did the same thing where I just whited out the dates and added in January through May instead. And then, you know, changed that there. The morning routine has shifted. And as I started working on it, I realized Ugh, I really need to just redo this because the stickers don't necessarily come up very easily. I need some of that maybe undo to make it work. But yeah, I might just have to remake that. I sort of gave up on it for now since my morning routine has changed. I also am setting up my January month and used this quote, it's not selfish to love yourself, which I think is perfect for January. Then I sketched out this January calendar for myself and I added another tip in here. This is a vellum sheet uh, printed from part of the Planner Press digital dash box when she did a birthday month. I think it was like last July or something. So I printed that on vellum and then tipped it in. And then here you can see I am setting up my monthly spread. And like I told you, I didn't want to have to set up something that I would have to keep track of or keep drawing in a lot. I wanted to keep the maintenance on this bullet journal pretty easy. So this is the main spread that I'm going to use every single month. So it starts out on the left there with a daily weight tracker. And then on this right side, I'm set setting up a thing for my daily habits. And it basically ends up being me tracking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different habits. And then you'll see that I go back and I'm referencing that October spread a lot. So you'll see me flipping back and forth, but I'm, I'm tracking these habits across the top and created a column for each one. And then now I'm going in and adding the lines to account for all 31 days of January. And what these mean across the top is I'm tracking my morning routine or morning pages. Then that second one is kind of a dumbbell for did I work out? The third one is no sugar or flour for bright lines. The fourth one is did I take my pills and vitamins? The fifth one is water. How much water did I drink? And then did I get any writing in that day? So that's a little pencil. <laughs> and then I have, a, um, I have a little clock there for did I track my time? a candle for, or actually a little gaming console thing for, did I have any like free time? It doesn't necessarily mean gaming, but did I like enjoy my day? Did I have some fun there? Then the next one is a candle and that signifies, did I do my nighttime routine and meditation? Then there's a little tennis shoe there for how many steps did I take that day? 
The little Z's, of course, are for how much sleep did I get. And then the heart is going to be an overall score of how many of those things throughout the day did I follow up on and keep track of. So then I also added these little birthday balloons to fill in for my mood tracker. And there's just one there for each day of the month. This is my birthday month. So I made sure to use balloons and I think it turned out cute. But like I said, I am not a great artist, so it's not the best thing ever, but it will be a good way to track my mood. And I basically just have three colors there for the moods, just kind of like a really good mood, a meh mood and like a medium mood and then a bad mood. Um, and that's plenty for me to see kind of how I was feeling for the day. This is my weekly meal tracker. Like I said, nothing too intense. And all I do is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacking. So I've got just each of these like three sections with seven days, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the entire week. And I have a basic thing written out here of like, uh, salad, for example, but here in the right hand side of the page, I am writing out what fruit in particular I'm planning to eat. What does my salad mean? Like in terms of the weights that I'm eating. So it's like an ounce of lettuce, a seven ounce mix of these certain veggies, two tablespoons of this dressing and so on. So I'm really getting particular about what exactly I'm eating. And this is just part of how you do bright line eating. So that is basically the entire bullet journal setup. And the only things that I'll be keeping up with on a daily basis are basically that one page of the weight loss, this page, weight loss and healthy habits. And then I'm going to add a photo there as well to that little box. And that's basically the main thing I keep up with. I keep a bullet, you know, a little bookmark there and check up on that page every single day. Then I added these photos to the front of the journal um, just as inspiration to get back where I used to be, or like my mentor says, not used to be getting, not getting back, but getting better. Um, and really focusing in on how I want to feel, what I want to do in my life, and how I want to get over these PCOS symptoms. So again, this is not about comparison or about telling someone how they need to eat, but this is a good way for me, I think, to support myself in all the goals that I have for getting out from under these PCOS symptoms and really feeling better in 2021. So I'm going to track my workouts here every day. So this will be one of those pages that I do come back to. So I'll write in like I'm doing here now that I went for a walk. And while I'm just getting into Brightline, probably for the first few weeks, I will just be walking. This morning routine page is going to have to be fixed. Then I'm going to, you know, keep these pages. I'm not tearing them out, but you can see I only followed it for about I guess it looks like until the 18th and then I just kind of fell off the wagon with it. But here is a photo of me with my daughter from October, um, just to remember how happy we were. Then I did keep up, like I said, with my meal plan for that first few weeks of October and then fell off. So that's how things will look. But here's my new January setup is very, very simple is just a calendar for reference. And then I have this healthy habits and daily weight tracking page. And then I have my meal plan and I will go in next week and set up my new meal plan and so on. And that's all I have to keep up with other than the workouts page and that other page where I am keeping track of my uh, weekly weight loss on that graph. And that's pretty much it. It should be easy to keep up with over time. And I imagine that because I'm not using a ton of pages in this bullet journal, it will probably last me for, you know, five to six months, hopefully. And that probably won't take me to the end of my weight loss since I have 60 something pounds to lose, but it will, you know, bring me pretty far. And actually, by the time I'm filming this voiceover, I am already six and a half pounds down and through the worst of the sugar detox kind of headaches and stuff. And I'm excited for the future. Um, I'm also just very quickly taking this um, Erin Condren uh, tab and putting it on the bullet journal. These are clear. So if you don't put like a piece of paper in between, then it kind of, you can't read the word January. So I'm putting a white piece of paper in here so that it kind of hides the backing and just will make this page easy to turn to. And I will just keep up with this every single morning. I'll go in as a meeting breakfast and mark those habits and numbers from the day before. I'm tracking my water with a Hydrate Spark water bottle and my 
steps with a Amazon halo. And that is kind of the plan for myself. But I hope that you enjoyed this setup. I hope you got some inspiration from it and liked seeing how things are. And I will definitely keep you guys updated on how my uh, bright line eating journey is going as I continue on through the next few months and hopefully just feel better and better as I go in my monthly notebook challenge if you would like to see it there. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and make a comment down below if you've ever tried Brightline or if you have any health and fitness goals for this new year. And I will see you guys in my next video.